Hello friends. Let's begin this session with various situations from our daily lives. How does a karate player manage to break a pile of tiles or a slab of ice with single blow of his hand? How does a small bullet breaks a glass? How does a bowling ball knocks down all the pins at bowling alley? The reason behind all these examples that we just saw is momentum. Let's learn more about it. Imagine you and your friends go to bowling. This is the last round and you need strike to win this game. Your friend picks a heavier ball and rolls it across. Well, he is good at bowling and he hits all the pins and it's a strike. Now, for you to win, you have to hit the strike too. But you know you can't manage the heavy ball. So, what will you do? You immediately applied physics and picked your lighter ball and ran and threw the ball. And it's a strike for you and you win the game. That was amazing, your friend said. But how did you manage it? Well, the answer is momentum. So we can say that momentum is a term that describes the strength of a moving object or the strength or force that the object has when it is moving. Objects that are not moving do not have any momentum. Things that are moving have less momentum if they are light in weight or moving very slowly and greater momentum if they are moving fast or are heavy. Now let's learn the formula for momentum. We saw that momentum is dependent on two quantities. Can you guess them? Let's go back to the bowling alley. Your friend picked the heavier ball and threw at a slower velocity and you picked a lighter ball and threw at a higher velocity. This means the two quantities that we are talking about are mass and velocity. So, we can conclude that momentum equals mass times velocity. The word momentum is generally expressed using the letter P. So, the formula is P is equal to mv. The SI unit for momentum is kilograms meter per second. They are also measured in Newton seconds, named after the famous scientist Isaac Newton. Since velocity is a vector quantity, multiplied with mass, which is a scalar quantity, momentum becomes a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. Direction of momentum is the same as velocity. Friends, do you know that when a gun is fired, a small mass, that is the bullet, moves at a high speed in one direction. A larger mass, which is the gun, moves in the opposite direction at a much slower speed. The momentum of the bullet and the momentum of the gun are exactly equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Using vector addition to add the momentum of the bullet and the momentum of the gun, gives a total system momentum of zero. The momentum of the gun bullet system has been conserved. This is called conservation of momentum. In this case, the direction of the momentum is important. Momentum in a system is added up using vector additions. Now let's see an experiment which will give an idea about mass and velocity as the factors that influence momentum. In this experiment, we will make use of automobile trucks which serves as our objects for conducting the experiment. Let's first understand the controls. Controls of truck 1 which is a green truck are on the left hand side and that of the truck 2 which is the red truck are on the right hand side. There are mass and velocity controls for both the trucks. Velocity, momentum and kinetic energy bar that shows the readings before and after collision for both the trucks. There are three tabs you can see, namely elastic, inelastic and Newton's second law. Now what does this elastic and inelastic means? We are talking about the type of the collision that will take place. In elastic collision, the objects remain separate after the collision has occurred. As we see on the pool table, the balls remain separate entities after the collision. This is an example of elastic collision. In ideal conditions, the total kinetic energy as well as the momentum is conserved. 
For this experiment, we will consider ideal condition only. Though pure elastic collisions are not possible because some energy is lost as heat energy and sound energy. The next is inelastic collision. A perfectly inelastic collision is when both the objects move together as one mass after the collision. This is what happens during car collisions. The momentum of combined mass after the collision is equal to the momentum of first mass and second mass before collision. That is, the total momentum is conserved but not the kinetic energy as its kinetic energy is converted into heat energy, sound energy and internal energy. Let's jump back to our simulation. There are several controls to help easier visualization of the cars during and after a collision. We can see this from left, right, top and front view. Front view is best for this experiment. Let's take the first scenario. Here, we are taking trucks of different mass and velocities of the same magnitude. To do this, increase the mass of the left truck to 1400 kg and change the mass of the right truck to 1200 kg. Choose elastic collision and select left car to be followed. Now, click the play button to set the cars in motion towards each other. Since it's an elastic collision, applying conservation of momentum 1400 multiplied by 10 plus 1200 multiplied by minus 10 will be equal to 1400 VL plus 1200 VR and kinetic energy. So, after calculation, we can see that VL is equal to approximately minus 8 meter per second and VR is equal to approximately 12 meter per second. You can observe here that initial velocity of both the trucks were same in magnitude. But since left truck had more mass, it had higher momentum and kinetic energy. And to keep total momentum and kinetic energy of the system conserved, some momentum and kinetic energy from left truck has been transferred to the second truck. Let's click on the reset button to see another scenario. Now let's take the second scenario where we will keep the mass of the two trucks same but the velocities are different. Decrease the mass of the left truck to 1200 and increase the velocity to 14 meter per second. Now both trucks have the same mass but the velocity of the left truck is more than that of the right truck. Choose elastic collision and observe all the parameters. In this scenario also, again the left truck has more momentum and kinetic energy. Some of which is transferred to the right truck to conserve momentum and kinetic energy. Reset the tab. Now in the third scenario, we will take the inelastic collision case. Once you are done with the second scenario, just change the mode of reaction to inelastic. Observe all the parameters. As we have chosen an inelastic mode of reaction, we did not see a difference in momentum, but we can observe a drastic change in velocity as well as kinetic energy. We have one more tab, Newton's second law. Newton's second law is related to momentum. Law states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force applied on it and this change in momentum takes place in the direction of the force applied. The law can be expressed as F is equal to delta P by delta T. In the above expression, F is the force applied, P denotes to momentum and delta P is a small change in the momentum in time, which is delta T. The triangular symbol is used here to consider a small change in the given quantity. Hence, the applied force changes the momentum. From Newton's second law, we can conclude that more the velocity, more is the force required to stop or move the body. More the mass of a body, more is the force required to stop or move the body. To understand this relation by using the experiment, you can download the software from the link given below. 
So now you might have understood that a karate player strikes the pile of tiles or the slab of ice with his hand very fast. In doing so, the large momentum of the fast moving hand is reduced to zero in a very very short time. This exerts a very large force on the pile of tiles or the ice slab which is sufficient to break them apart. The bullet has a larger momentum because of an extremely large velocity. The bowling ball is heavier and has more momentum. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this session. This session is based on an interactive 3D simulation called Scholar. Visit www.scholarlab.in to request a download of the software application to try this out for yourselves. If you have liked this video, then hit the like button, comment on any queries and yes, subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon and never miss another update from Let's Do It. Till then, keep watching, keep learning and follow your curiosity. Thank you.